Right, hello everybody. I can see the attendees number is uh, a stocked rising. I think we're just waiting for those final last few people to, to join us. But most importantly, a, a big welcome from, uh, from myself and from, um, from everyone here on the call today. Um, for those of you who don't know me personally, my name's Chris Bruce and I head up the Chamber of Commerce in Sutton Coldfield. And today we're here to talk about the Sutton Coldfield Town Centre Master Plan, which was released a few weeks back um, to the world after much work, effort and, uh, and blood, sweat and tears from, from three other people on the call here today, but also many other, other people involved. So um, firstly, just wanted to, uh, to introduce uh, Simon Ward, leader of uh, Sutton Coldfield, Royal Sutton Coldfield Town, uh, Town Centre. Um, Simon, how are you? Are you OK? Yeah, good. Good. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for, thanks for the opportunity to be here. Great stuff. And we also have Richard Crutchley and Evelyn Wong from uh, Tibbold's. Uh, good morning, both. Chris. Hi, uh, yes, and, and, and Tibbles were, were a key sort of um, uh, partner and consultant in, uh, in, in engaging with businesses and, 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 and local residents and many other organisations to, to set the master plan process uh, in place and, and get, it all, uh, get it all set up. So it's great to have you all here. It's, it's wonderful to see um, so many people from the Sutton business community and from the community as a whole here to hear about the town centre. We all know how... Uh, how much people care and, 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 and look towards the town centre in Sutton Coldfield. And we also know that the struggles and the, the challenges faced by a lot of people uh, in, in, in that industry at the moment. Um, but it's a really good uh, opportunity to look to the future here today with some of the work that's been put in um, uh, around this process. So we'll come on to that in one moment. Just a few sort of housekeeping uh, rules and regulations from me. Um, you'll see that where we have a Q&A uh, set up here today. So if you've got any questions, any comments, please put them in the question and answer box. That will be, uh, be, be on the, the bottom of your screen. As um, uh, Richard, Evelyn and Simon do their sort of presentation, put those in and then following the, uh, the presentations from, uh, from, from the team, we'll, uh, we'll open the room out to those questions for, uh, for Simon, Richard and Evelyn. Um, a few uh, further things from me. I will always uh, always say, of course, a big thanks for everyone getting in, involved today. From a Sutton Coldfield point of view, you may have seen our AGM took place uh, recently, uh, earlier uh, earlier uh, last week, um, and it was great to welcome Phil Ark, install our newly uh, installed president for the next two years, uh, and we certainly welcome any any engagement, feedback, and ideas from any of our members or non-members in that matter about how we can further represent Sutton Coldfield businesses. Um, you're obviously here and you know it's uh, an online event and that ongoing uh, events at the Chamber are, are all virtually at the moment. I'd certainly recommend you speak to your, um, your relationship manager or, or a contact at the Chamber to hear more about some of the events that are taking place uh, through into uh, September and, and beyond. Um, finally, uh, our quarterly business review is due to finish next week for the survey. So. Uh, if we can uh, encourage you to fill that in and give us an update on your business across the greater Birmingham area in these, uh, these interesting and, 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 and testing times, that'd be much appreciated. And we'll make sure the, the link is sent across to you all uh, after the call. So that's all, all from me. A quick introduction then to, to our panelists. Um, we have Simon Ward, who's leader of uh, Sut Royal Sutton Coldfield Town Council, uh, has business interests in corporate finance in Birmingham. Uh, served on our uh, chamber committee for many years and has had three years as leader of the, 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 the council and a Sutton resident for longer than he cares to, to remember, but it's certainly at 20 decades plus. So, Simon, uh, over to you. Thanks again for Tibbold for their involvement as well. I'll leave you to, uh, to give a bit of an intro to Richard and to Evelyn and, uh, and go from there. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Um, no, thank you ever so much. And, and thank you to, uh, to all the participants we have this morning. I've watched those numbers ticking up at the bottom. It, it's great to see... Uh, see so much interest from, from, from local businesses um, in the master plan. Um, I guess if I could just possibly just start by, by offering my congratulations to Phil, um, who's obviously taken over as president of the chamber, um, and also my congratulations to Casey, uh, his predecessor, who did an absolutely fantastic job. So um, yeah, I've been privileged to, to, to sit on the chamber council for the last couple of years. And uh, yeah, there's, there's massive good work that goes on. Um, by, by the Sutton Chamber. So congratulations and, and thank you to, the, to, to both of them. Um, I just wanted to just make a few kind of opening remarks, I guess, really, and sort of put this in, into context for people. Um, 
I think everybody, you know, people on this call are, are Sutton businesses um, and they're Sutton residents. Um, and what, what binds us is, our, is a passion for our royal town. Um, and there's lots, so many great things about Sutton. Um, and I might be slightly controversial here by saying the town centre isn't unfortunately one of those at the moment. Um, and, and that is absolutely something that the town council has, um, has pledged to, to, to address and, and, and pledged to address um, because whilst we're a relatively um, young organisation, so as, as, as Chris says, I've, I've been a, the leader for three years, the council's been around for four years. Um, and indeed, you know, we are um, uh, relatively small. Um, we, don't, we don't lack in ambition um, and we don't lack in an ambition to want to push forward with the things that we know matter to residents. Um, and, and I guess, you know, the town centre, uh, people on this call will have views and experiences over many years. Um, we, we really got going with this um, uh, in about 2018 um, when we formed a thing called the Town Centre Regeneration Partnership. Um, and this is, this is really key to what we're trying to do here. The Town Centre Regeneration Partnership is, is bringing together um, uh, local government, so um, you know, ourselves, um, Birmingham City Council, the West Midlands Combined Authority, Andy, Andy Street's organisation who've been really supportive and helpful here. Um, the Local Enterprise Partnership, um, community groups um, and I guess really really importantly which is why this morning is is, is so um, it's is, is such a privilege to do is business um, so two key members of the regeneration partnership are the chamber um, and the business improvement district um, and yet you know, what that organization what the what the regeneration partnership has been working towards is this first stage which is the master plan that we're so pleased we can talk to you about this morning um, it is only the first stage and I don't doubt there'll be some, some questions and there should rightly be questions about where does this go from here, how can we deliver this um, and you know that's even before we start talking about the business and um, local environment that we that we now work in as we do this event on Zoom and we work in a, in a, in a, in a, in a post-Covid, we hope post-Covid environment. Um, so I guess I'll just say you know they're really pleased to have so much engagement um, business is pivotal. Um, this will be a community, a resident, a Sutton-led regeneration exercise, which is what we're, um, what we're passionate and committed to delivering. Um, so I guess without any further ado, the people you've really, you really want to listen to are, are, are Richard and Evelyn, um, who've got, the, uh, who've got the, the, the real kind of guts of the, of the master plan and where we've, where we've got it to now. Um, so I will, um, I will hand over to them and uh, let them take us through it. Over to you, Richard. Thanks ever so much, everyone. Thanks, Simon. Um, and I'm going to share my screen now, so I'm, I'm hoping that this uh, works. Okay, can everyone see that? Is that okay? Perfect, perfect, Richard. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, well, thank you uh, for that introduction, both Chris and Simon. Um, my name is Richard Crutchley and I'm with Tibbles. Uh, Tibbles is a, a planning and urban design consultancy. We're based in London. Um, and this sort of project has been uh, great for us. It's a, you know, we do town centre work um, across the country. We do estate regeneration work. Um, we do planning, we do urban design. Um, and this has been a really uh, great project for us. We've really enjoyed working on it. Um, I'd like to thank Chris for inviting us to this webinar this morning. Um, and also uh, thanks to the, to the town council for uh, being such a good client along the way. Um, what I want to do really is uh, tell you uh, over the next 20 minutes or so uh, what we've been up to and the process that we've followed. So um, to tell you a little bit about um, the process, the ideas we had, the engagement we had through uh, the, the last few months, um, what the big moves are, how we formed them, uh, the form of the final report, uh, and, and then touch a little bit on the next stages, which uh, Simon said is uh, an important question that you may have uh, when, we, when we get to the end of this uh, during a questions and discussions um, session at the end. So uh, without further ado, um, I start with the ideas and, and we, we commenced um, in Sutton Coalfield um, in October of 2019. Um, I, I didn't know Sutton Coalfield myself, um, I had a perception of it, um, I'd always thought it was a, um, an affluent place, um, I think I've been to a wedding at a golf club in Sutton Coalfield once 
Um, but my, my, my uh, idea of the place, my actual knowledge of the place was quite limited. So really the team that we had, which included the retail group uh, and urban movement who were helping us on uh, shopping uh, analysis and transport analysis, we really wanted to get to know uh, the place, what it was all about, uh, what its strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats were, uh, and to get a, a, a sort of first idea about what, what we might be thinking about in terms of Sutton Coalfield. Um, we, we clearly talked in those early stages with the Town Centre Regeneration Partnership, um, with the Town Council, with the City Council, with the LEP, with the Chamber of Commerce. We got out there and started talking to uh, some of the main landowners early on. Uh, we had Folio on board as well, of course, so we had an opportunity to talk to some of the com community engagements very, very early on. Um, and so the first part of the work was really developing uh, what the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats were, what we thought they were. Clearly, uh, Sutton Coldfield, a very creative place. It has good perceptions outside of Sutton Coldfield itself. Uh, I, I certainly had a good perception of it. And it's well connected. It's, it's close to the M5 toll. Uh, it's well connected to Birmingham. It's on the railway line. Um, there are weaknesses, clearly, which is one of the reasons you want a master plan. Uh, I think the main one really is uh, the, the ring road and the impact of the ring road and the effect it has on the town centre overall. But also Sutton Coldfield hasn't had much recent change. Um, it's a little bit left behind in terms of offices and, and retail uh, provision. It's, it's dominated by um, high street chains and, and quite large shopping centres. Clearly there are a massive opportunities here, the links to the park, the scope for growth in some particular areas of the economy, particularly in hospitality, um, in hotels and leisure and those sorts of things. But there are also significant threats and I think one of those uh, relates to this diagram that I have on the right hand side of this slide. I think that um, Sutton Coldfield is really a, sort of a traditional town centre and it's being challenged by um, you know, the cities, particularly Birmingham, obviously, that's, that's close by, which is successful, which had a lot of investment over the last couple of decades and has really improved in its offer. But also the larger retail, particularly retail centres and leisure, cent leisure centres like Ventura. Uh, so it's taking trade away from the traditional uh, centre that Sutton Coldfield is. But also we found that uh, the local centres around Sutton Coldfield, the likes of Near Green and Boldmere, are also improving their offer is better they're offering independent localized service and it's again taking trade away from Sutton Coldfield so Sutton Coldfield sort of being stretched on either side and, and what we thought very early on uh, that we needed to do was to sort of raise the status of Royal Sutton Coldfield to give it a, a, a prominence and importance that reflects its catchment area uh, and supports the role that the higher um, higher order centres like Birmingham offer and the local centres offer uh, and it can sort of pro provide that higher service to the local centres but also support Birmingham uh, and, and thrive uh, within, within its own environments and, and, and through that we developed some early themes connecting, competing, celebrating, changing, clarifying and community which we felt really um, reflected what we needed to do and I'll come back to those because they sort of changed uh, for the master plan itself and, and became something slightly different but, but very similar to, to what we really uh, thought at the beginning. Um, also in those early stages we, we, we started to think about the big moves and the big moves sort of reflected Birmingham City Council's big moves. They have, uh, they use this term for their major projects uh, and we started thinking about way, maybe what they would be. I uh, already mentioned the, the, the impact of the relief road on the town centre. Uh, so the impact of the ring road, but also, there was also a relief road planned uh, through the station that would um, sort of expand the gyratory around the town centre. And, and we wanted to look at uh, the relief road and, and what that was doing and, and what that could do for the town centre and whether it was the, the right uh, solution for the town centre. We wanted to enable easier access into the town centre for everybody, but particularly for pedestrians and cyclists. We thought that within the ring road, there was a dominance of, of retail and not much else. So we wanted to try and diversify what the offer was and give the centre some distinctiveness, building on its own characteristics um, and you know, the identity it has to do with things like the park. Uh, we also wanted to try and encourage some living within the town centre because there's very little of that at the moment and also build on the heritage of the, of the town. There's an awful lot of really great history in Sutton Coalfield and I think some of the Heritage, some of the important buildings uh, are rather overshadowed by, well, particularly the roads through 
the town, but also sort of lack of access to them and a, a apparent sort of lack of um, awareness of them. We also wanted to look at the main sites within the town centre and we, we sort of picked those out as being the main shopping centres, the Grace Church Centre, the Red Rose Centre, New Hall Walk, and we started to think about what they ought to be offering to the town centre and how they might help in any master plan uh, as we go down, uh, go down the process, go through the process of developing the master plan. Uh, and talking about the relief road, a number of sites have been protected for a number of years uh, to allow the relief road to be built. Uh, and we started thinking about whether the relief road was necessary and if it wasn't necessary, what those sites might uh, contribute to the town centre in terms of linking the station to the old town and the old town to the, to the, uh, to the main shopping area. So we really started thinking about uh, what the town centre was uh, and sharing that with the board, well, with the partnership uh, and those early uh, consultees that we had and once we developed that uh, and we had a, uh, a series of thoughts and proposals and ideas we moved to a stage of engagement and hopefully some of you will recognize the, uh, the the boards to the right hand side of this slide it's one of the exhibition boards that introduced those ideas to us and, and sort of started to say what the master plan was all about uh, say at the top Top of that slide there in November and December we were meeting with the landowners and the members of the, of the partnership board. So we met with the landowners of the Grace Church and the Red Rose Centre and New Hall Walk and, and a number of the other significant sites around Sutton Town Coalfield and uh, Sutton Coalfield Town Centre including the Brassington Avenue site. And that widened out in February and March we had a sort of formal period of uh, consultation over four weeks and during that period uh, we put all of the material that we could online and invited responses to that, observations to that by email. Uh, we set up a, a number of public sessions uh, in the Grace Church Centre and in the library where members of the team, Tibbles and the Town Centre, uh, Town Council were available to answer questions and take comments. We also had public sessions in some of the local centres around uh, Sutton Coalfield. Uh, we had invited workshops and drop-ins. So there was a drop-in uh, 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 arranged for the businesses and we had a number of businesses come in on that morning to, uh, to raise questions. It was really good to get um, a wide range of people and opinions uh, through that process. And we were really lucky, I think, to get you know, over 2,000 people engaging with that public, consult process, uh, public consultation process and getting a, a lot of formal written responses from the public. I mean, we had 129 written responses and the quality of those was really quite impressive. I've, I've been involved in uh, consultation engagement um, procedures before and either, you know, sometimes you get nothing, sometimes you get, you know, one petition saying exactly the same thing all the time, but really the, the diversity of thought that people put into the responses was, um, was, was really impressive and it, it really came across I mean, we knew it by then already, but people really care about Sutton uh, Coldfield Town Centre and what's happening to it and want to see something happen. So that was really encouraging. There were a number of common themes that came through that. Um, we, we sort of picked up on some of them already. So you've got sort of the, the, the need to diversify some of the uses in the main town centre, introducing residential uses so people could live in the town centre. There were a lot of comments around um, public open space and the quality of the public realm and the role of some of the spaces that already exist within the town centre. A lot around the link to um, Sutton Park and the fact that Sutton Coalfield itself is quite a green place but not really within the town centre so greening the town centre was important and people picked up on the um, on the little brook that, that flows through the town centre which can't be seen at the moment but does sweep around uh, the New Hall Walk car park and people wanted to make more of that. Parking came up a lot, um, a lot of people thought that there wasn't enough parking, um, the argument was put back that perhaps the quality of the parking or the location of the parking isn't good enough so parking came up quite a lot. The ring road was clearly, clearly important, um, people like the ring road because it allows them to get in and into uh, the town centre quite quickly and around the town centre where they need to go but clearly there are issues about accessibility and crossing the ring road and the perceived noise and the pollution and all of those sorts of things that associate themselves with um, with lots of transport. Bus interchange came up uh, a lot, the movement of the buses from uh, Lower Parade to a, a site closer to the station, something being proposed on the back of HS2 through Transport for West Midlands. Um, deliverability came up a lot. I'm sure there'll be questions about that later on. 
um, and the level of detail provided by the master plan. Uh, one thing that came up a lot at the town council meeting was um, the fact that this is a strategic document. And again, Simon referred to this earlier on, this is the start of the process. It's like a roadmap for what might happen next. It's aligning partners and getting them going in the, in the, right, in the right direction for, for the town centre as a whole. It's not a detailed master plan that provides every single answer to every single issue. Um, alongside the master plan, which is available on the town, uh, town council's website, there is a consultation summary report and some of the other questions that were asked uh, during the consultation process are set out in there. Clearly, um, since March, the, um, the master plan has had to respond to the feedback that we had. So this included clarifying proposals that uh, clarify that that proposals are at a high level and that further detail and testing and analysis will be required as projects emerge. And it doesn't really matter how big the project is. You know, most proposals that come forward, big or, big or small, will, will need further detail testing, will need further consultation, will need further analysis and will provoke further questions. Uh, we also provided an implement, implementation strategy and a delivery um framework for the uh, for the master plan which i'll come back to a little bit later on and we also started to amend some of the big moves so they um clearly addressed a, a need for a diverse range of uses for improved cycle infrastructure for access for everybody and for a provision of uh town center living for a wide variety of people not just market housing but those people who really need it affordable housing uh, extra care housing uh, across the whole of the uh, demographic so coming to the report itself, um, I'm sure some of you have already seen this. This is the front cover. Um, and the structure of the document uh, is uh, shown on the right hand side here. So there's a forward, uh, introduction and purpose. There's a whole uh, uh, chapter on Sutton Coldfield and what it is. It touches on its history and its origins and how it is at the moment and how it works and where the market potential is. Um, it sets out a vision, objectives, and those big moves. And the big moves uh, are underpinned by a number of uh, individual projects that are defined, and there's a delivery strategy in there as well. So to give a flavor of how the layout looks and how it reads, this is the, the town center vision. So you have the vision there on the left-hand side, reinvigorating the town center, capitalizing on the attractive and green historic assets, uh, and the high degree of connectivity by diversity in the town center, increasing accessibility, strengthening uh, distinctiveness, um, and creating a heart for the, for the town as a whole that will be welcoming for everybody. So, I mean, vi visions are quite hard to capture in a single sentence, but hopefully a lot of the things that make Sutton Coffee what it is are, are captured in there. And they're expanded on by the six objectives, we touched on these earlier on in, in our initial ideas, and they've changed slightly. Uh, to be connecting, celebrating, changing, complementing, community and communicating. And the, the broad uh, headlines under each of those objectives is set out in the master plan um, beneath each of those headings. And then a little bit more detail, those big moves are set out under uh, each of those um, three main objectives, uh, the, the movement of transport, economy and community and built environment and identity. And, and these sort of set out um, the main things that we want to try and achieve within uh, Sutton Coalfield through the master plan. So MT1 is, is around the relief road. Um, so looking at how the, I mean, we felt through the master plan that the relief road wasn't a proposal that was going to deliver benefits for Sutton Coalfield. So we, we addressed that and, uh, and, and said and say within the master plan how we managed to get those benefits uh, without having the relief road itself, which is around public realm and, uh, and accessibility. Um, B, BEI1 is, a, is around heritage, BEI2 around the public realm. So each of the factors um, within the town centre that we thought were important were reflected in the big moves uh, that are listed out here. And the big moves has a plan that goes with it. It's, uh, it's quite a busy plan, but you can see that each of the um, each of the big moves has a relationship within the town centre. It, it impacts upon the town centre at some point, uh, so that's demonstrated on the on the plan. And I say that these big moves are underpinned by specific town centre projects. Uh, and again, within the master plan, these are identified um, on the map and 
demonstrate how they might be shown. So we take the, the Grace Church Centre there as an example, where the queue is. Um, there are links through the Grace Church Centre that are sought uh, to Bressington Avenue, to open Bressington Avenue up. Links to the parade remain important. You have uh, proposed locations in there for improved public realm. You have proposed um, uses around uh, short-term leases on pop-ups, the, the pink area to the south there, just by the D. So, so all of the projects are shown on the maps as well as being described through the master plan as well. Um, those projects are described in a bit more detail. So for areas of new public rain, realm, for instance, there are sketches of how they might look, how they might, how they might work, how they might connect different parts of the town centre, how they might activate town centre uh, frontages within, within the centre. Um, and there are precedent images in there as well um, from other places as to how these projects have worked elsewhere, how they might look, what the sort of feel for them might be uh, if they're to be developed. And each of these projects also links back to the objectives and to the big moves uh, by the cross references at the top. So you can see that project D, which is around uh, the parade and the lower parade, little sketch, uh, case studies, exemplars, and linking back to those big moves and those objectives up at the top there. Uh, and all the town centre projects in the master plan are set out in this way. There's a phasing timeline for project delivery within there, so it gives uh, an idea about when projects may come forward. So um, this uh, gives it gives an idea about you know what might happen when. So for instance, the, the Red Rose Centre is an opportunity earlier on. Uh, the City Council own that; they are on the um, Town Centre board. There's an opportunity there to uh, to get that going. And quite quickly, whereas Newhall Walk um, is, a, is a more complex site with the ownership it has and the constraints it has on it, we see that as being uh, at, the, at the end of, uh, of the process and the master plans, you know, perhaps a 20, 25 year uh, project in itself. So, um, you know, Newhall Walk is, is towards the end of that, but it, it sort of just gives an idea about when things might happen and how they might happen in relation to one another. It's split here in, uh, into transport and highways and development in the public realm. So, you know, different things happen at different times, but hopefully they're all interrelated by the, uh, by the master plan itself. The master plan also has a section on delivery. So again, for the big moves and the objectives, um, there are delivery partners who are identified and possible funding methods that are identified as well. So. Uh, let's pick one, um, let's pick D again, Parade, Lower Parade, South Parade. You've got Birmingham City Council, the Town Council and the combined authorities who maybe deliver part, delivery partners on that and you may expect to seek uh, funding on that through, uh, through landowners, through community infrastructure levy uh, and through capital um, public realm project funding as well. So there are, there are pointers here in terms of delivery. Um, there are pointers as to who are, might be responsible for that. But as these projects come forward, they will um, grow in, in detail and complexity as well. The master plan provides that strategic overview. So quickly on, uh, on next steps, the town council have already approved the master plan. It is from our perspective uh, complete, so we're handing it over to you. Uh, Birmingham City Council are going to adopt the uh, master plan as planning guidance. So it means that they will have to have um, the master plan in mind when they're making planning decisions. Um, the delivery strategy, as I've said, sets out projects that could be taken forward by the partnership board. Um, and it identifies those people who are responsible for that or those organisations who are responsible for it. And we'll have to determine a way to bring those forward in due course. Uh, clearly funding availability and cost is going to be dependent on the project. You know, if you're looking at something in the Grace Church, clearly the landowners there uh, would be interested in that. And, you know, they have their own ideas about how they want to develop their centre and, and what they may be prepared to throw in the pot for that. So funding availability and cost is not something that's, you know, directly sorted out by the master plan, but the pointers are there as to who might be responsible, who needs to be brought together, where the collaboration and the partnership is required. So hopefully, um, now the master plan is approved, adopted, um, is planning guidance, uh, we can start to see, you know, projects coming forward, the less complicated ones coming forward quite, quite early and seeing a change in the town centre which will build momentum over the years and deliver the master plan in full over the long term. 
and that's everything. Hopefully that's not too quick or too slow or too detailed and you've got questions uh, that you may want to ask. Uh, but thank you for your time. Fantastic. I'll, I'll probably just duck, duck, duck back in then. Um, thank you ever so much, Richard, um, for giving us that, that sort of detailed and, and you know, sort of really informative and thoughtful explanation of how we, how we got to where we've got to and how we've got to kind of base one um, on the journey. I guess I, I just wanted to, to make a couple of, um, uh, sort of quick observations and points, really. Um, I mean, I think it, it's important that um, we sort of take this head on that the regeneration of the town centre isn't going to be retail led. Um, and, you know, I've lived here for 20 years and I'm as disappointed as everybody to see, um, you know, Marks and Spencer's go, um, you know, the other anchor stores that we've had in the town centre. Um, but what we need to do is come up with a plan that encourages retail back into the town centre. Um, and that, uh, you know, the way we will do that is by this, what this plan starts to think about is how we reimagine the town centre as a place where people do live, um, people where they do spend their leisure time and, and, and where they do shop. And actually those things are kind of all connected because if people are living in the town centre, then they are going to want to go to the shops more in the town centre. They're going to want to go to the, um, you know, go, go to, the, to, to, to the leisure facilities there. Um, a couple of other things I just wanted just to draw out, I suppose, was that the, the, the first one is that the transport hub um, which which you know, is, is really important to this. So uh, Transport for West Midlands, this is HS2 funding, but they have committed um, to a transport hub which would see the buses effectively move out of the town centre um, to a site uh, on Brassington um, uh, by, by the station, because obviously you know, having transport all together is absolutely the right way, the right way to think about this. And I think that's a massive opportunity, um, some real money, um, that we are pushing really hard and that Andy Street is pushing really hard for on our behalf to get um, so that we can use that and that will be a catalyst for some of these these early things that Richard was talking about. Um, and I'm sure people will have questions about funding etc and we'll, I'd, we'd be delighted to think about those as in, and, and come back to you on those as we go through but um, you know, I think one of the other things that's, that's important here as well is that um, we do have concentrated land ownership in the town centre um, which is which is massively positive as well. If you look at some of these um, schemes, kind of and, and, and projects elsewhere in the country, um, it's a real kind of patchwork of different landowners. Um, it, two great things here: we have got three landowners who are the um, who own the, the the lion's share, not all of it, but the lion's share of the town the town centre, kind of within the ring road. Um, and as important as that, all three of them um, have engaged with us um, in terms of this process as well. So. Yeah, that's that's usually positive. We're not we're not doing this in a in a, in a vacuum from the people who actually actually own the land. Um, I'll shut up there because I'm sure people have got lots of lots of things they want to ask about it. So uh, yeah, I'll hand back to yeah. you, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Richard. Thanks, Simon. I no, really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, some some interesting uh, interesting things. Uh, I mean, the, the, it's such a detailed uh, detailed plan, isn't it? That uh, yeah, we I'm sure you could have uh, spoke for a, for a little while longer, Richard. But I certainly would encourage everyone after the call just to sort of read through that on the on the website and get a, a clear idea of some of the things involved. And it is really you know, really interesting and, and quite exciting uh, to see. So much appreciated. Well, you've got some questions coming in, which is brilliant. It means I don't have to uh, I don't have to try and uh, think of them on the on the spot for uh, for Simon. But I suppose the first one. Um, uh, from from Naeem, if we start with the, the questions from the from the delegates first and foremost. So, um, Naeem uh, Arif has asked: Are we approaching any new businesses uh, or niche retailers um, uh, and niche sort of businesses to see if they would be interested in moving to Sutton once this is done? Obviously, some will be making plans for twelve months ahead, so um, you know we, we don't want to obviously miss out on them uh, choosing Sutton and going elsewhere. So, so where where is that sort of engagement with with you know, potential new tenants coming from, and how does that work? Probably for I'll take that one, Richard. Simon, I think, probably, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I mean, it's an absolutely great question because um, I kind of touched on it in my, in my comments at the end there, that, um, you know, at the moment, retail is sadly leaving the town centre and we cannot have that continue. Um, we need to be encouraging um, all sorts of different retail into the town centre. And I've had lots of emails from residents saying that, you know, and, and Richard touched on this, why, why, why do people go to Boldmere sometimes rather than go to the town centre? Well, it's because they like the, you know, the independent delis, the independent butchers, you know, all, all of that sort of stuff. And I, I personally think that having that in the town centre 
will be part of this kind of mixed economy that, that all, all Richard and, and, and I even have begun to articulate there. Um, so I, th I think it, it, it's absolutely um, an opportunity um, as those, those various um, kind of projects get progressed that we will be in a position where we are saying to the specialist retail that, and, and I know it's retail is, is, is Naeem's um, you know, specialist subject and he, he knows much more about it than I do. Um, but what, what, what I believe is that um, we, we're making the town centre a place that fundamentally has footfall. And when the town centre has footfall, then you know, they, they, they will come, so to speak, to, to use a bit of a Kevin Costner phrase there. Um, you know, there is absolutely, um, that's what we have to do. We have to make it an attractive place for people to live, people to spend their leisure time and ergo to kind of shop. I don't know, Richard, if you wanted to add anything to that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you're right. It came through the consultation engagement quite strongly, this idea that people wanted, um, you know, independent shops to visit to make Sutton Coalfield something distinctive. People seem to like the local centres, um, like Boldmere, and there were others that were mentioned as well. I mean, the, the people had an affinity with them. They they felt connected to them. They felt that the service was, um, you know, special for them. I suppose the people in the shops knew who they were. They, they knew who they were going to, and and that seems to be something that Sutton Coalfield lacked. And and I think that that's sort of reflected now in. Uh, the number of national retailers that you have in in the town centre uh, within the shopping centres, um, the type of space that you have, um, and there's there's a sort of lack of independent traders. Although having said that, we we you know we went into the market and I was quite surprised at the range of independent, quite unique shops within the market building that weren't represented in the town centre. And I, I don't know whether there's a strong relationship between shoppers in Sutton and, and, and the market, whether people are using that on a regular basis. But I, I really saw potential in, in the sorts of businesses that were in there having space, you know, more formal space in the town centre. So I think it is a, it's a case, there's a lot of things wrapped up into it, but I think it's a case of, you know, giving you know, the people who live around Sutton Colford what they expect from a town centre. And I think that includes independent uh, traders, um, local businesses, local craftspeople, you know, coming in and making the town centre something really distinct and special. Retail still has a part of that, I think, as well. But, you know, town centres, I think, in the future are going to be much more about, you know, meeting, social meeting, a little bit of leisure, browsing. You know, it's an experience to meet other people and see other people. And I think that, you know, Sutton Coalfield has got to provide the diversity of uses including residential that, that allows that to be easy and allows Sutton Colville to support its local centres and, and also feed the city centre but be its own thing. Yeah, Thank you Richard, really appreciate that. Thank you. Hopefully that's given you a bit of a, an insight. Um, moving on to the question from uh, from Simon Ferguson. So uh, most of the images used are of old Sutton Coalfield, presumably because we are ashamed of the mess in the middle. I'm sure that's not the case. Uh, are large empty shops in the master plan, i.e. what we plan to do with it. Um, I know that's a, yeah, a regular question for some of the I've heard from, from businesses. So Simon or, or Richard, what do you think from that? I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Um, yeah, thank you, Simon. Thanks for not mincing your words. Um, I'd, I'd prefer to say that, that we're not ashamed of them, but we're absolutely ambitious for them. Um, you know, I guess we've, we've sort of alluded to that. You know, there is a fantastic heritage in the, in the, in the town, you know, from the, from the park, from the, uh, the town hall area, you know, VZ Gardens. There's 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 loads there for us to be to be proud of, and frankly, that we don't probably bang the drum about in the same way as we should. Um, but you're absolutely right. You know, the the large retail units in the town centre um, are not going to be um, you know a long term future. You know, it's it's really really sad to see what's happened with uh, just down the road with John Lewis in 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 Grand Central. You know, but that is indicative of the a trend that had started before COVID, but that has been um, accelerated by COVID, um, really unfortunately. So I think I come back to what I said, you know, I think the uh, earlier in, in terms of a, a, a mixed economy of people living, working, um, spending their leisure time um, and, and therefore shopping in, in, in Sutton Town Centre um, probably dictates that there will be a number of smaller units. And I know it's something that, you know, very practically on a, on a, on a kind of day to day basis, we've been talking um to uh to to, to to angela who's the center manager of, uh, at the grace church on behalf of m and g um and i know it's high on their agenda as well so there is a 
there's a kind of shorter term intervention and stuff there that we are really conscious needs needs to happen as well as this longer term you know vision stuff around the plan no, thanks, Simon. I appreciate that. And I see uh, 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 another question here from uh, from Richard, which is around the, the Grace Church, and and hopefully that's uh, that's uh, give give uh, give you an answer to that, Richard, around the um, the pandemic changing our, our shopping habits and the the uh, you know the the, the the attraction of independent retailers. And as you say, I think it's about creating a space that people are proud of and want to open independent shops, and, and that's got to come first, hasn't it? And that's a lot of the work being done with a, with a view to, to doing that. So, no, perfect. Um, question from, from myself, and I'm sure it's something that, you know, I know that was asked at the previous one, obviously on the funding side of things, that's obviously hugely important. Just give us a bit of an insight into how that process will will work and, 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 and where and how that funding will slowly hopefully be released across some of the projects. Shall I take that, Richard? Shall I, shall I start? Yeah, um, yeah, you're probably yeah. close to it than me, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think Richard did allude to this um, when in, in the presentation as well. It, it, yeah, it, it's hugely complicated and it's a long term um, um, objective and a long term plan. But that's not to say that, you, could, you know, just because it's difficult, you don't crack into it and, and, and get on with it. Um, and I think having the kind of the groups that we've got together within the regeneration partnership is really important. Um, now, you know, and certain, you know, the West Midlands Combined Authority, for example, has funds and has funds to commit to projects such as this. So, um, you know, on, on behalf of, of the town, um, you know, I am, we are lobbying hard to get to get support from the Combined Authority for certain elements. Um, the, you know, we, we talk about the transport hub. Um, that's a that's a significant project. You know, that's that's sort of the numbers that have been talked about. They're getting up to 20 million quid. Now that, you know, and that's not just for the specific site. That's for improvement of the of the sort of public realm and all the area around it and the linkages from there um, back into the town centre as well. Um, so I think you know that there's there's a couple of obvious public sector sort of opportunities there. Um, and Richard touched on another one there, which, you know, everybody will know that Birmingham City Council is not necessarily in the best position um, financially. But what Birmingham City Council is, is a very serious landowner in the town centre as well. And it's been great to get their engagement around the Red Rose Centre, um, which belongs to them and which they bought as an investment, um, which, but would, which absolutely becomes part of this whole, this whole exercise. Um, yeah. And I just say, I guess just repeat what I said as well about landowners more generally. You know, the fact that, um, you know, M&G... Um, or the British Rail Pension Fund, who who, who own the the long the long lease on on, on New Hall Walk, are prepared to engage and talk. Um, shows that they are prepared, um, I believe, and you know the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. But to invest in the assets that they have at the moment to make them worth more for the longer term, um, as part of this overall vision and project, um, because you know spending money in Sutton Coalfield and it comes back to some of the demographics that Richard alluded to at the start. Um, that's got to be a good place for them to do it. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I, th I think with <clears throat> with a master plan like this, it's about getting um, partners on board, about saying what you want to do and getting everyone uh, sort of aligned with that vision. I think if the money was already available, you wouldn't be doing a master plan. You'd be doing the projects. Um, and I think that what you have in Sutton Coalfield is, you know, that partnership board, which brings together the key um, certainly the public sector and community interests um, alongside the chamber as well. Um, that want to do stuff in in um, in some company, but can't do it alone. They've got to come together to decide how to do that. And the fact that everyone has engaged with that uh, and is now going through an approval process is really positive. And I think that we've had again, as I alluded to during the presentation, we have spoken with all the major landowners on more than one occasion, um, and we've had their feedback. So you know, it has. The master plan is based in, in reality. Um, there is a prospect that these things can come forward, but we can't say where the money's going to come from for every single project. But it's it, what's really positive is that there's a shared vision, a shared ambition, and all of the organisations who can deliver that are talking to one another in a friendly way. No, thank you, Richard. Thank you. Just looking at the, some, some of the other questions coming as well. One from Chris, uh, Chris Waden. Hello, Chris. Um, there's been some work on Bassington Avenue recently regarding cycle lanes. Has this had an effect already on traffic? And what is the longer term plan for this, particularly regarding the, 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 the bus transport interchange? So cycle, cycling and green transport. 
Let me, let me, I'll, I'll take that one. And um, I, I noticed on the Q&A that um, Katie Hale had, uh, had, 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 had raised this one as well. And I'm really glad it has been raised. It clearly shows we've got Sutton residents on here as well as Sutton business people. Um, yeah, that cycle lane has taken up quite a lot of my time in the last, uh, the last few days since it was put in. Um, and it was put in by Birmingham City Council, I hasten to add. Um, and it was put in rather quickly. Um, and I think at the moment, everybody would agree, and we're working closely with, with Andrew Mitchell on this one as well, um, that it's, it, it, it's not what it should be doing. Um, and it isn't, uh, it doesn't, I'm mean, really blunt, you know, as a, as, a, as a kind of layman here, it doesn't feel very safe. Um, so the people's guys won't be familiar with this, but, you know, for people on the call who are Sasonians, um, you know, the ramp down from the Grace Church Centre, people crossing that lane, um, cars crossing out of Park Road as well. Um, that, that's causing some serious concerns. And I, I just want to reassure people that the town council uh, have raised those concerns um, loud and clear with Birmingham City Council and, and uh, as, as is Andrew and I've raised them with, um, with the leader of Birmingham City Council um, because yeah, what sits at the heart and Richard touched on this at the start, promoting cycling is something that we are absolutely passionate about doing and absolutely passionate about having that at the center of the master plan. Um, opening up the routes and links to Sutton Park are absolutely at the heart of what we're doing here um, and are really important to this. Um, it is a shame that this, this, this cycle lane was, was, was rushed in, um, didn't necessarily get the full, the town council did respond to a consultation. A lot of the things that we said are, that we thought would be important to residents didn't get adopted. So uh, what, I'll, what I'll say very clearly about that is that we are um, working closely with, with, with Birmingham to see if it can be made safe and to see if it can be um, delivered in the proper way. Um, because yeah, the aspiration of what it's trying to do is great. Um, the practicality of it, unfortunately, um, falls somewhat short at the moment, and that's not right. Mm. I, I, don't know, I, I don't know the background to the, to the one on Brassington Avenue. I know it wasn't part of the master plan, but you have seen across the country um, as a response to um, the pandemic and the lockdown, uh, cycle lanes, uh, another means of getting around, widening pavements and that sort of thing, being being put in quite quickly by um, councils mainly. Uh, I've just come back from a holiday in the northeast, and they've, they've closed one of the carriageways on the front at, uh, at Colour Coats and Whitley Bay. Uh, so, and, it, and they've converted it to a cycle lane. I don't know whether that was, um, you know, planned or not either. But we're seeing these things, and I think there's a sort of a process of of testing how things might change and I think there's less traffic around so perhaps the impacts are thought to be less at the moment and these things can be tested. I don't know how the Brussington Avenue one came around but I think that again anything that's trying to promote um, cycling and alternative means of traveling and experimenting with that is a is, is a good thing but clearly it has to be done in the right way and to, to the agreement of everyone and, and not winding anybody up. I don't know whether um, Evelyn knows anything about whether she knew anything about this cycle lane coming in prior to but yeah I think it, it looks as though it was a something that's happened quite quickly and, and we knew nothing about it. No, no I didn't know anything about it. It's, it's certainly not how we would have promoted it. It's not how we've promoted it, how something could come forward for cycle infrastructure in the mass plan. So. To keep our eye on that one, though. Thank you, thank you both. Uh, just picking up again on another question from uh, from Mark uh, Mark Tonks. Um, two really, and, and two really good questions, I suppose. First one is is the time scale. Obviously, you know, there's a twenty to twenty five year timeline on the whole master plan potentially. Um, with that in mind, and based on your experience of projects, when would you expect the first step to take place from a real construction point of view in terms of some of these, you know, these plans and big moves being taken up? Should I take that one, Simon? Yeah, by all means. Yeah, please. You've got to go first. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think um, again, big big projects take time to come together. Um, I, I mean, I think that um, in terms of the Red Rose Centre, I mean, that seems to be the the opportunity that's um, um, that, that could come forward earlier. I mean, there's an awful lot of work to do in terms of uh, getting any sort of planning application together. Um, supporting documentation, drawings, that kind of thing. Um, I, 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 you know, the City Council are on the partnership board. I'm sure that there are conversations going on already that, um, that, that, that we'll be discussing how that might happen. You know, I, in terms of major construction, you're probably looking three to five years away at, at least. But I think that there are smaller scale um, 
projects that, that might come forward much more quickly than that if there were small pots of cash that could be used. So you, you might be looking at um, you know, small scale public realm or public art projects quite quickly, but the ma major construction is, uh, uh, it takes time. And uh, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing in the master plan at the moment that's in the pipeline that, that would see a, a timeline more quickly than that. There are applications on some of the key sites. Um, Birmingham Road springs to mind, for instance. Um, so some of those smaller ones might come forward a little bit more quickly than that, but the major stuff is going to take some time. Can I just come on, on a bit yeah, well? Yeah. And, um, sorry, go on, Ethan. Sorry, I just wanted to say as well, I mean, I, Richard started talking about it. This, um, within the master plan, we talk about this chapter on short-term interventions, and we do suggest um, there is opportunity to, to bring some of those smaller things forward more quickly. And I think um, Richard Lancaster mentions the point about what happens in, in some of those um, empty retail spaces. I mean, we propose there's, a, you know, this could be some retrofitting that could be done to allow for kind of small independent retailers to come together in a kind of market type space. Um, those things could come together quite quickly, um, depending on on how the the landowner approaches it. But there is opportunity for things to come forward um, sooner to you know start to instigate that change and start to bring people in. And I mean, there's there's that potential again for um, I think Mark Tonks here has said about um, providing kind of business hubs and things. I mean, that's that could be a potential use for some of those bigger units to come up as a short term kind of thing. Yeah, I suppose all I, all I would add to that, and absolutely, I get that, you know, one of the things we've talked about is the fact that there isn't that much office space. Um, now, that was obviously pre-COVID that that was, a, that was a conversation, but actually given the different ways that we're all working now, and exactly, I, I saw that, that, that Q&A that came, that, the question that came in from Mark, I think there is a massive opportunity for that. Um, you know, those sort of reimagined small office interaction hub type 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 places where lots of jargon words there but you know what i mean um that that that, that, that we could get into the town center um i think the other thing because of the, the connectivity to use one of one of richard sees um i mean the other thing i'd say on um bigger bigger biggest um construction projects is, is the transport hub um you know the transport hub um can happen more quickly than that um and we are relentlessly pushing transport for west midlands and, and andy street is as well um, because, as I say, whilst that is a there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a number of knock-ons that come from that in terms of um, uh, things you can do in the parade if the buses are, are kind of moved over over to that that part of the town and all the kind of public realm and linkages back into the town centre as well. I think it's really important. Oh, thanks, Simon. Wonderful. And looking through um, Julie's uh, question about the um, the business plan and the the uh, the tourism and, and, and entertainment. How important do the panel feel that art and entertainment? Uh, is in the regeneration um, uh, and certainly the resale experiences that I know the bid do put on or have put on pre-COVID. Um, you know, is there any plans to continue that as well? Yeah, um, sorry, I, don't, I, I, I just reading that question now. Go on, Richard, do you want to go first while I read it? That's yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, um, arts and culture is a tricky one at the moment, isn't it? But I think we're all missing those, those things. Uh, but yeah, certainly uh, arts and culture has got to play a part in that mix of uses that makes Sutton uh, an attractive place to be in um, and, and want to dwell. You know that arts and culture often supports um, the, the the daytime uses in the town centre by providing something for the evening. Um, you know, theatres and cinemas and what have you. Um, yeah, re really, really important. And once we we all start using those again, or we'll find a way that we can use them and, and they stay profitable, the, the better. Um, you know, as a as a town centre where you know it should be attracting a large number of people it's you know, something Coldfield is is ripe for for a good arts and cultural um, um, provision uh, and should be doing that and I noticed Julie's question also asked about you know those different retail experiences like vintage fairs and vegan food fairs and markets and I, again I think through the process of doing the master plan um, we've suggested that but I think the town council were already looking along those lines um, and, and getting those type type of things in in the short term to to complement the um, the retail offer that's there, um, perhaps to bring out some of those market businesses that I mentioned that are currently housed in the market into a more prominent location to have exhibitions. I mean, there's already some um, temporary arts space within the town centre. The BHS building was using that. Mm -hmm. 
whether that can become more responsive to what people need in time, um, I, I don't know. But yeah, certainly arts, culture, markets, um, you know, that broadening of the general offer um, in, in a town centre mix is, yeah, all really important. Yeah, and I know the bid, of course, is, you know, as part of the, the, the partnership in the town centre are, are obviously have uh, hosted and have worked with numerous uh, numerous partners on some of those events, uh, you know, in recent years as well. So I know Mike's on the call here, so I know he's uh, he's worked tirelessly in that regard as well. So Simon, yeah, if you just want to uh, conscious of time, he's got a few more minutes left. I know there's a question here from Richard around the cycle lane without the knowledge. I, I, I assume you did know what was happening. I think we mentioned that you were uh, you were consulted, but that, um, yeah. That's um, can I just come come back on Julie's question just just quickly, and I will answer Sorry. that one. Don't worry, I'm not I'm not just I'm not going to avoid <laughs> the really hard one. Um, the uh, Richard's done a great job. It, it, getting people to come to the town centre and to spend time in the town centre is about all the things that that Richard's talked about. And absolutely, having a great cultural offer where the town the town hall is absolutely pivotal to that is 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 really really important. And you know the work that the town uh, the town hall trust have done. Um, since they took the building on and took, took, took the job on, despite everything that they've been facing at the moment in terms of COVID, et cetera, as well, is, is, ha, has been fantastic. Um, and absolutely, you know, that kind of cultural piece, Richard's done a mile far better job than me. I think the other thing I'd, 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 and I'll take that, I think the other thing I'd add as well, we haven't really talked about it so much here, but it's heritage. Um, you know, something's got a fantastically rich history. Um, and I see an opportunity here um, as part of this to be able to showcase that and, and to share it with our kids, frankly. Um, you know, we've all heard the stories about Henry VIII and his, um, you know, his, his hunting exploits in in uh, in, in, in Sutton Park, um, but there's, there's there's loads more to go there in terms of Bishop Vesey, and we have a you know, we have a fantastic archive within Sutton, um, which at the moment sadly lives in a uh, lives in a in a in a in a locked room in the in the Red Rose Centre, and it isn't made available to people, and this is an opportunity to do that and to attract yeah. people into the town centre as well. So the town council is doing some work on that archive. To, to, to preserve it um, but we need to make it available and a heritage centre um, would be a fantastic way to do that. Um, so in terms of Richard's question about the uh, about the cycle lane um, just to be really really clear um, so the town council it's a Birmingham city council initiative which which comes out of as Richard alluded to some of the emergency um, cycling and um, the first kind of tranche of the emergency cycling emergency travel um, opportunity. Um, we, we were um, we were told that it was it was being proposed. Um, we raised a number of questions uh, around it along the lines of some of the things because you know because we live and work in the town and because we're here every day and we because we you know like the people on this call because we know um, what some of the challenges might be. Um, and I guess all I'm saying is that in the sort of initial um, installation of that, not not all of those questions were um, and those challenges were addressed. Um, and what we will what we are doing now urgently. Is, is doing our very best to make sure that they are. So hopefully that, that answers the question. Brilliant. No, thank you, Simon. Just Richard, kind of... by the way, if it, if, if, if okay. it doesn't answer Richard's question, I'll say this now. Um, um, please drop me an email and I will reply directly. I'm very thank happy you, to. Well, just looking at the last two. So we've got Vikesh um, is, is, is working uh, working with CGIs and looking at some of the, um, the visual side of the master plan. So again, I'm sure um, Vikesh, if you contact Simon, he'll be able to put, put uh, and Richard put you in there. In, uh, in contact with the right people within the organisations to, to get involved. I'll, in I'll, I'll come clean and say Vikesh has already written to me about that with, uh, within, the, within the last week or so, so uh, he can expect a response. There you go. Right, so, there we go. Thank you. Wonderful. And then finally, yeah, the, the, the last one around the, the Queen Street next to Aldi, uh, is, there a, um, is there any plans for improvements uh, of that? Uh, and, and again, going back to the cycle access. I think this is actually... Um, shall I take this one, Richard? Because we can, I can talk. We can talk yeah. about the junctions. Maybe you want to drop in as well. I mean, this, this, and Richard alluded to this at the start. When you think about some of the big vision stuff that's within the master plan and that whole kind of concrete collar, um, one of the things that was was quite um, striking to me early on was when one of the one of Richard's colleagues said, um, on two of those big junctions around the town centre, you could park a Boeing seven five seven jet, um, which just says how much the town centre is kind of dominated by the roads and dominated by the wrong things. Um, and you can see from some of the pictures that Richard and Evelyn showed what, you know, what good looks like in other, in other town centres. So, you know, I, I, I think that that, you know, that crossing by Aldi isn't great, um, but actually I think that that junction as a gateway 
into the immediate town centre is not great at all. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's something that we would have real, um, you know, real aspirations to, 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 you know, to make different, to improve. Okay, Simon, thank you. Conscious of time, but no, thank you, everybody, for, uh, for their engagement. Hopefully that, that Q&A has answered some questions. I think we got through them all in the end, which was, uh, which was, which was encouraging. I'm sure Simon, Richard, Evelyn um, would be more than happy to, to pick up with any of you on further discussion points and engagement and questions you might, you might have on the back of what's been discussed. Um, again, I'll, you know, we really would, um, you know, as part of the gender, gender generation partnership, is encourage everyone to, you know, to, to engage with that master planning process, look at the plan itself, speak to the council, speak to, um, you know, your friends, your contacts locally in the area and, and, and really um, ensure that, you know, we get some good, good feedback and continue that discussion as we move through the projects. A huge thank you to Simon, to Richard, to Evelyn. I know Richard and Evelyn have put in a huge amount of work over probably months or years or a seriously long time over, uh, over running the master plan. And, and this is really sort of their, their final uh, engagement, I suppose, as part of the master planning exercise. So um, a huge thanks for, 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 you know, for, for your efforts and, uh, and, and again to Simon and the town council for their, um, you know, their, their, their input on this. And hopefully it's given everyone a really good uh, idea of some of the plans that are, that are for the town centre. We as, cha as the chamber are, are based in a pre-COVID world in the centre at the college and, and, and I know a lot of businesses and our members are in this area. So it's really good to see people. Um, coming on and, and, and getting an idea of, uh, of, of some of the engagement um, and, and some of the some of the opportunities and, and the master plan as a whole. So thanks everybody, absolute pleasure. So please send any feedback or any further questions over to us, and uh, and we'll speak to you all again soon. Thank you, panel, and we'll speak soon. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for having us.